Hi, hello, uh, Ben Errington here from Hawk and Cleavers Level 1. Gonna do a reaction slash first impressions video for the amazing new footage slash trailer for Resident Evil 8 or Resident Evil Village. Resident Evil in a village. Um, obviously we had the PS5 reveal, uh, lots of games, we saw the hardware. Uh, this was the highlight for me because I'm a big Resident Evil fan and the fact that this series keeps reinventing itself in the way it does um, is pretty amazing. A lot of the a lot of the leaks or rumors about the game that we heard um, in weeks and months coming up to this trailer being released were pretty spot on. Um, so this isn't like a traditional reaction video where I'm like reacting to it in real time and it's the first time I've seen it. I'm like, oh my god, wow. Because my reaction to it was kind of a bit underwhelming, to be fair. Because I watched it during the live PlayStation 5 event. And it didn't quite click with me initially. I didn't quite understand that it was Resident Evil, probably until about halfway through the trailer. Um, I think because the cynical part of me didn't think any of the leaks and rumours were going to be true because, you know... I always kind of think that's the case, especially with like, especially with Resident Evil stuff in the past. I think over the last few instances, anytime you hear some sort of rumor, I'm quite quick to disregard it because I think no way, absolutely no way. Um, but yeah, these were pretty spot on, so I was quite shocked. And I, I, again, halfway through the trailer, I went, "Hang on a bit, this is Resident Evil." I think it was when I saw the umbrella logo in in some of the gameplay, in some of the cutscenes that we saw is when I realized. So this reaction is gonna be like, I'll watch the trailer, um, talk a little bit about it, and I think I'll go back and sort of focus on some parts of it, and maybe talk about what they could be, what I hope them to be, um, and stuff like that, I guess. So it's pretty cool. Let me know what you think of this trailer, uh, whether you're a Resident Evil fan or not, whether it looks exciting, because it is, does seem, again, like a bit of a departure. It seems like a combination of Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 7. But those two elements combined do create this whole sort of new vibe with new enemies and new locations as well. So, uh, yeah, let's have a little look. Have a little look-see. And check out Resident Evil Village trailer. See, that RE Engine logo didn't come up at the start of the trailer on the live stream. Otherwise, I think I would have understood. His story comes to a close. Long ago, Whose story? A girl went with her mother to pick berries for her father, who was hard at work. Snowy location. Another thing that was rumoured. But the forest greeted them with a dark, cold silence. The bushes empty. Yet determined to find the berries, the rascal broke free of Mother's grasp. Now I look at it again, it looks trees. Resident Evil Mother's 7. It looks cries faded fast as the, the same sort of environment. Over vine, under branch. And into the forest deep. What is it with that creepy story? It's just a local. Is that area. Ethan talking? Is that I'm Mia? Into that stuff. Reading a book? Is she reading it Quit to so paranoid. a child? No, no, friendly, friendly. Too late. Already dead. You oh shot me. God. Shotgun. Who sent you? What are? No. Old dude looks concerned. Who is? This is quite dog soldiers in terms of country house being raided by unseen force. Culty signs, a big old castle, villagers, that looks so Resident Evil 4. Is it set in present day? I mean, some bits obviously look like yes, other bits, maybe not so much. Saw the umbrella logo then. Black Philip, witchy. Oh, wow. Very gothic horror. Very 
Van Helsing feel. And of course, werewolves, which were rumoured, and I kind of disagreed. I poo-pooed that. I wasn't entirely convinced. But yeah, there we go. Resident Evil 8 Village. 8 in the Roman numerals, which is ingenious. Chris? Chris Redfield. Lovely Sorry, coat. Ethan. Resident Evil can't seem to decide the way, how he looks, though. He doesn't look anything like the Resident Evil 7. Why? Chris Redfield. Okay. Coming. 20... 20... One. Okay, so I'm going to go back through, I guess, and pause on some bits and talk about them a little bit more. Um, first impressions are, again, very, very different. Um, it could have a few different locations, obviously with the introduction of werewolves, uh, witches, and maybe other, other kind of scary enemy types. All can be explained away by the the biohazard, the bioweapon warfare stuff that obviously Resident Evil has always presented um, as its main antagonists. So yeah, I mean, you could pretty much add anything to this to this universe and explain it away with the with the bioweapon stuff, which is fine. Obviously, a lot of people prefer the traditional zombies. Um, and that works, but I like to see new takes on it. I think obviously Resident Evil 4 and the Ganados, that was initially maybe a little bit jarring, but after a while it just becomes, it becomes commonplace. And I think I felt that with Resident Evil 7 as well, with the first person stuff, I was like, this doesn't feel traditional Resident Evil to me in these initial stages. But after a few hours, it just locks in. And I understand that this is just uh, a departure for the series, a, a sort of reimagining of some of the classic elements of the game, um, and to, to to present it on a, obviously a new console and for a new generation, and and it works well. I think the core elements, the survival horror elements, and obviously the the characters that you know and love, and the lore, and the stuff you know, the umbrella stuff and the BSAA stuff, and uh, all of that big scary global corpor corporation creates um, viral outbreak as long as that's like the core and the fact that that good versus evil thing then it then it kind of works and they, yeah you can pretty much take it anywhere as long as that's that's the core and I think that's what's the magic of Resident Evil the fact that it does manage to reinvent itself as often as it does even like her main installment of the franchise from 7 to 8 as we see here 7 was obviously a huge huge reimagination of what the game could be and 8 even though it looks like it's probably going to be first person again it introduces so many different elements and now I watched the um, uh, developer the developer video that came out alongside this as well and uh, they were sort of saying it's going to be essentially the same as Resident Evil 7 but maybe with a Leaning a little bit heavy, uh, leaning a bit heavier into action. Now, a lot of people who are fans of the series did kind of think as soon as the series went a bit more action heavy, that's when it's lost its magic. But you know, maybe they just mean a minor introduction of more action in terms of what we got in Resident Evil 7, which you know was action heavy enough. It wasn't the most action. It wasn't Resident Evil 5 and 6 levels of action, but you know, it wasn't a straight up survival horror. You can't defend yourself running away sort of game it was you were standing standing your ground and fighting so it'd be interesting to see what that means um but yeah let's just look a little bit closer at some of the elements that we've got here so his story comes to a close after watching that it could mean ethan it could Long mean ago, a young girl went with chris redfield um, I guess a lot of people are kind of thinking Chris because he seems to be quite prominent on the artwork. Uh, it'd be interesting to see who you play as, whether you do play as Ethan in some sort of prologue, and then maybe take over as Chris into the main body of the story. This house obviously looks very similar to the house in Resident Evil 7. Nice detail on the potatoes. That's what I want to see. I want to see realistic looking taters all right that's what i want from my what games a creepy story so here we've got 
like a house. This, I mean, the, the, the wash of this looks like it could be a prologue or, or like a prequel part of the story. It sounds like that's Ethan. That could be Mia with, with a haircut. I think we're led to believe that this is Mia. Um, this could be a dream sequence. This could be... Um, or a nightmare sequence. Maybe Ethan's being made to see things by some of the scary forces in the game, like the witch. It's just a local tale. It's just a local tale, mate. What have you probably got a problem with local tales for? Quit being so paranoid. Well, who can blame me? Bang! No, no. Friendly. So we end Friendly. up in a farmhouse oh. with who sent you? an old dude who um good realistic jowls i like that i like his hat uh now that i see it like at this point i still didn't realize it was resident evil when i was watching the live stream i still didn't realize so clearly even though this clearly does look like the re engine i guess so i mean more fool me what's that noise clicking they're coming who is Could be werewolf. Something grabs. Someone grabbed him, yanked him out, took him up into the ceiling. This hand here, because it looked claw like. Claw. A little bit, yes. Could be the werewolves. Um, I'm excited though, because I mean, I love werewolves. I love Dog Soldiers, the movie. So this part feels very Dog Soldiers to me. To relive that in a game would be, would be pretty ace. Oh, you yanked me right through the bloody floor, mate. Okay, we've got like a culty symbol, what looks like, could be like a parasite, maybe the Ganado's parasite in the middle that's being worshipped somehow by some sort of cult. Wings of a crow, loads of sticks around, so I guess that leans into the, the, the witchy, the bloody witchy stuff, Blair Witch and all that. Maybe they're borrowing from that, introducing. Um, statue. More symbols. Symbols that could relate to um, Umbrella. And there we go. The big, big old castle. Which, you know, that's going to be a great... I think we can already see... We get a close-up of the, the main sort of gate slash door in a second. But it looks like it's got parts missing. Puzzle pieces that you're probably going to have to slot in um, in order to get in there. There we go. As soon as I said it, it appeared. Um, Lady and a baby. Again, this looks like it doesn't look like it's modern day, but we're probably gonna go into an environment where everybody's kind of living in a bit of a creepy bubble, like in Resident Evil 4, um, which is what this looks like. You know, we've got villagers, farmers. But this person's a friendly or 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 a villain. Uh, who's that? That looks quite creepy. Reminis a bit reminiscent of Silent Hills. A creepy, uh, creepy lady in in a corridor. And I mean, who's this as well? Never, never new character. Somebody, somebody perhaps that if we're Ethan or Chris that we're going to need to join forces with in order to take down whoever is behind this outbreak. This guy. It's not the same guy, is it? Is as before in that in the house with you? I don't think it is. He was a lot older, wasn't he? He was a lot older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flat gap man. Boom. There a second ago was the umbrella symbol alongside some other other symbols. So obviously, umbrella's going to be back. Took a bit of a back seat in the last game. Um, same characters before with an old guy who looks like Sam Neil. He looks a bit beat up. Get out of here. Um, dead animals. Uh, we have Black Philip there. <laughs> Black Philip from the witch. There was something else just afterwards as well. So obviously like witchcraft and stuff's going to be quite key. There's the witchy character who looks kind of kind of creepy. A little bit creepy as to Someone on fire. Yeah, what's all this as well? We get into, inside the castle. 
It looks like it's inside the castle. The interior looks very reminiscent of the Spencer Mansion from the first game. Like, are we going to get some sort of un different level of undead? Maybe like vampires? Um, this character could be someone similar to um, what's her face from Code Veronica, Alexia? Yeah? Where she's sort of infected with some version of the virus, but she's got control of it in some way. Maybe she's got control of others. Um, but yeah, she's... And here's a look at one of the enemies, which I think this is like the werewolf, but we see someone jump down in a second. There we go. Um, this looks a little bit like the big guy with the axe from Resident Evil 5. So maybe we're going to get... Because Resident Evil 7, for the most part, in terms of what the, the the enemies we confronted was mostly, you know, the infected, obviously Baker family, or the the molded um, creatures. So we didn't see like those the ridiculous, over the top Resident Evil villains and enemies. And it looks like maybe this game is going all right. Okay, that was Resident Evil Seven. Now Resident Evil Eight, we're gonna bring the crazy stuff back. This guy. Who's that guy then? Uh, I like the animation on his beard. I like that. I like all the little individual hairs. PlayStation 5, clearly very good. Uh, uh, that beard animation. Is this like some sort of Van Helsing character? Is this... A, is it a friendly? Is he a friendly? So these bits kind of look obviously separate from the stuff in the village. Oh. Oh, I didn't notice that the first time around. It looks like... Looks like... Is she kissing... Oh, wait, okay. Biting my wrist, sucking blood. There we go. So that corks kind of confirms the possible vampire-like tendencies of whatever is this new version of the virus. Okay, and that's a better look. I think that is just, it was the same enemy that was attacking you before, before the big guy jumps off the roof. But now we can see yes, werewolves. Um, is this the, the werewolf fully transformed? Maybe not. I kind of like it if it is though. These half human wolf hybrids. I think they'll look pretty cool and kind of fit within within the world. If they turn into full straight up wolves it might start to feel a bit a bit more Van Helsing, a bit more Castlevania like. That's kind of like the money shot though it seems. I do like how the eight fits fits in the logo like that. That looks cool. Um, yeah, it kind of feels like a real marriage of Resident Evil Four and Seven together. It feels like obviously I guess a lot of the rumors after Resident Evil Two, or Resident Evil Three's remake was that we're going to get a Resident Evil Four remake next. Maybe this game is going to like scratch that itch that people want a remake of Resident Evil 4 for whatever reason, this is going to kind of go, right, okay, well, here's a whole entirely new game set in a similar place. Chris? Chris? Sorry, Ethan. So this looks like he's killing either Mia. It could either be Mia or it could be, you know, Ethan's new wife. This is several years after Resident Evil 7, so maybe he's got a new wife, a new family, a new... He's moved on. And then for whatever reason, Chris is coming into it and going, sorry, Ethan, but your wife's got to die. Maybe, you know, she was she was infected some way. Maybe she's a spy of Umbrellas who's been kept there to to keep tabs on Ethan. And Chris is suddenly breaking up the happy family and going, look, you've been living a lie, mate. Look at her. Bang, 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 bang. Bang, 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 bang. Possibly. Chris. Why? Why, Chris? Why? You son of a... So Chris obviously looks completely different to he did in Resident Evil 7. Maybe they've gone, right, that didn't really look traditional Chris. Let's make him a bit more hench so he can punch boulders and stuff like he usually does. Um, but yeah, there we go, Resident Evil 8. What do you think? I think, you know, I've always got high hopes for this franchise. So I'm always, I'm always hopeful and always positive and I think it's going to be awesome and I can't wait to see more. Apparently uh, from the developer video as well, they said we're going to see more at the end of the summer. Which is lovely. Can't wait to see more. 
Um, so there we have it. That's uh, first impressions of Resident Evil Village, the announcement trailer. Thanks a lot. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.